good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So my name is Neeraj Kheria. So now let's get started. First of all, let's have a basic understanding of AWS, what AWS is, and then we'll be moving forward with our discussion on the concepts of machine learning, right? So first of all, let's discuss on why exactly we need to have cloud, right? So basically, we need to have cloud because again, traditionally, if we had to deploy any application, then we could have simply purchase a stack of servers and then using those stack of servers we had to uh, we had to perform the complete installation of the operating system we had to install the drivers the networking everything right and then only we could have simply started using or we can say starting using these servers for for deploying and hosting application right but again that was a costly affair because again we had to physically buy these servers we had to store them in our own infrastructure and everything right and again, just to avoid these kind of, of hectic tasks, that's why we have now cloud-based services where if we want to use any of the applications, right? If you want to get started, we can simply subscribe to the vendors who have already set up their servers, right? So we can subscribe to the vendors like we have AWS, Microsoft Azure, we have GCP. So we can, sub so we can use their servers. We can use their servers to get started and then simply deploy application within few minutes, right? So that's how we had just, so that's exactly what we have seen here, right? So earlier we had to purchase a stack of servers. We had to perform the entire monitoring in case of high traffic. We had to adjust or we can, we can say buy more resources and then we had to maintain those resources as well, right? Which require a lot of time, correct? And that's why just to make sure that we don't end up focusing entirely on the, on the development because again, if we are also the business owner, then we can focus only on one area. We can either focus on the on the deployment or we can focus on our business, right? And now that's why we have cloud, right? So, so using cloud services, we can we are simply subscribing to the vendors where they have already set up their servers at their own end, and they are simply giving us the access through which we can deploy the application on their particular server itself as a part of cloud computing, as a part of cloud computing. And basically, there there are three say, three main service models available in cloud computing. We have infrastructure as service, we have platform as service, and then we have software as a service. Now, to understand this in simple layman terms, if we talk about infrastructure as service, right? So suppose uh, if we go back, if we go back almost ten or twelve years back, at that time, suppose if we wanted to purchase a system, then we then again suppose there was a vendor who only gave us the entire infrastructure as in the entire system altogether, right? But again, there was no operating system installed. We had to take care of the drivers as well. We had to take care of the networking and everything, right? That means in this infrastructure, infrastructure as service, we only got the hardware. We only got the hardware and, and, that, and that itself is called as infrastructure as a service. That means when we get only the hardware and we had to perform the installation and set up for the operating system, networking, drivers, softwares, then this is a part of infrastructure as service, right? Next in platform as service, what we get now in platform as service, we get the same. Now there's another vendor here who is not only giving us the hardware, but again, that vendor is also giving us the operating system also installed, right? That means here we have windows, here we have all the drivers already pre-configured. And in here we can see here in platform as service we get the entire system plus we also get what we what we get is we also get the entire operating system we get all the drivers and everything already pre-configured and pre-installed here as a part of platform as service right so in here we don't have to worry about in here we don't have to worry about the installation of different drivers and networking here we can simply work on uploading our softwares and then we can get started as a platform as a service model right and at last we have service as a model here. So now in here, the same thing happens. Suppose here we are also getting the entire infrastructure plus in here, apart from the operating system also pre-installed here, right? Apart from here, we get the entire infrastructure, the software's operating system, everything pre-installed and pre-configured, right? But here we are also getting the software's also a software bundle also pre-installed here. For example, here we have already the software's for video players for, for different gaming applications for different ms for different office based applications right these are already pre-configured as a part of software as a service now let me suppose if there's a guy who wants to play games here then this guy will not go no i can go for infrastructure service but again this guy has to perform the entire installation of operating system drivers networking everything at their owner itself 
this guy can also go for platform service but in here the guy has to worry less about the installation of operating system and drivers but still the guy has to install all the other third party applications the games and everything right whereas the guy if, if the guy goes for software service then everything is pre-configured and the guy has doesn't have to worry about anything here as a part of software service right so in so these are the three main service models available in cloud computing platform all right and aws is a part of part of platform service where we get the entire infrastructure and then we can start developing on top of it right and software service like we have gmail google like we have google drive we have uh, google maps we have facebook we have all the social media networking website we have netflix amazon prime these are what these are all the softwares which are being offered to us as a service based on a subscription model right so this is what we discussed here we have infrastructure service we have platform service and then we have software as a service models here now if you talk about aws aws as we know is a is one of the main leading cloud computing providers where aws started back in almost 2006 right so the entire concept of for cloud computing that was started by amazon back in 2006 where it has been where since 2006 it has been the market leader for cloud computing platforms right then followed by microsoft azure and then we have gcp and so others where it has multiple services offered for computation for databases for iot for ar vr for migration and for different services that we can think of now in terms of the advantages for aws if you talk about advantages of aws again here it, we make it more flexible we here we make it cost effective we make it scalable and again it is so it is it provides a good amount of security as well right now when we talk about flexibility that means here we have here we can choose what kind of resources we need and we have to pay only for those services right so we can be so we can so we can say this is like a complete customization of what services where we can customize what exactly we need how we need it till when we need it and again will be delivered will be uh, will be delivered the exact same package that we're looking for right it is cost effective because here it works on pay as you go model that means here we have to pay only for the services and that too only for the time duration we have used it for example if you're using only one gb ram for suppose one gb ram one core of cpu of server for suppose for five hours then we have to pay only for those five hours right if you're using 10 gb server for five hours then we have to pay for 10 gb of server for five hours right and that's why and that's why it is again flexible and again it is much easier in terms of billing process as well right and again it can be scalable that means if we have any requirement to increase or we can say upgrade or downgrade the services at any point of time we can simply do that being a part of service upgradation and then it provides a good amount of security as well because again it follows the industry leading encryption method and that's why we have services that we have kms and other platforms that we will be discussing step by step now amazon now in terms of the entire infrastructure for amazon it is currently divided into two parts here we have the regions and then we have zones right so so we can say regions are basically the the main list of all the regions available in a given area right for example suppose instead of deploying the application in a central location what we have done we have simply divided the entire application we can say data center into other servers as well right so that if there is only a center location for example if, if the data center was only available in india then the request coming in from different users from different parts of the entire globe here right they would have simply created a bottleneck situation for any single data center altogether right because the same the because multiple requests coming from multiple parts of the globe they all would have been they all would have been returned to the same bucket altogether or we can say same server altogether right so just to make sure that we are overloading the entire concept here we are, that's why we have the concept of regions so that if any suppose if we if any user is coming from north from north california or from oregon from oyo right so again they can be served from the region deployed near to them right that's the main concept of regions and zones and in one region there are multiple zones as you can see here we have three two four six right so these are what these are simply zones these are simply zones here that means if now if we talk about this in simple layman terms let's remove this yeah 
So I suppose in uh, if this, suppose this is one region altogether. Suppose and in this region, for suppose for North Virginia, there are three users, all scattered, right? And then here we have three availability zones, right? So now depending upon the proximity of the availability zones here, suppose this for this user, this one is closer, so this will be served from this zone here. Suppose for this user, this region is this, this particular zone is closer. That means this user will be served via this zone, right? I suppose for this user, this zone is available more closer, so, they, so they'll be served via this particular zone altogether, right? And for and again, this is also used for fault tolerance as well. That means for any reason, suppose if, if one zone is not available, then still that users can access the data using the other zone, using the data stored in another zone, all right? And these are different domains available in AWS here. We have the computation domain, the migration, the security and compliances, the storage, networking, messaging, databases, management tools, and analytics, along with other verticals, right? So there are multiple services available inside these different zones that we will be discussing step by step as we continue our journey, as we start our journey on learning AWS sphere. That we'll be looking at step by step. Next is we'll be looking at what exactly is machine learning. Now let's assume first of all with the concept of machine learning first so that we have a fair understanding of what machine learning is. And then we'll be resuming further with our discussion on, on two services that is AWS Lex and AWS SageMaker as we proceed further. All right. So first of all, let's discuss on machine learning. What exactly, what exactly machine learning is. And then we'll be coming back on our discussion on top of Lex itself, right? We are, like, we are using Lex. We'll be looking at how exactly we can design a simple chatbot as well as a part of our hands-on, right? So now let's get started on discussion on machine learning. So now, as we know, machine learning is basically training the entire system. Machine learning is what training the entire system in making it autonomous. That means here we are simply training the system in such a manner that it becomes easier for the entire system to know what exactly the data is how it has to behave data, how it has to behave with data, right? For now, machine learning is more or less, we can say same as training a kid itself, right? Now, when we are training a kid here, we are simply, we simply teach them, for example, what is two plus two? What is four plus four? What is five plus six? And again, based on these understanding, based on these understanding itself, we, the kid can now, if the kid goes to an exam itself, right? If the kid goes to an exam, and then now kid observes the question such as what is 111 plus 13, right? Now based on what the kid, what we have trained the kid, now the kid can try solving that complex problem, right? As a part of machine learning, correct? So machine learning is nothing more than we are training the entire system in such a manner that based on the understanding that we have given to them, they can make the decisions accordingly. That's the main purpose of using machine learning, right? Now let's understand on the machine learning fundamentals as well. Now basically there are three types of much of learning available in machine learning. We have supervised, unsupervised, then we have reinforcement learning, right? So first of all, let's look into what exactly is supervised learning, right? So first of all, if you talk about supervised learning, the same example that we have studied just far, right? Just now. So for example, here we have two images. We have for duck and again, second one is definitely not a duck here as we can see. Now these two are again based on the predictive modeling. That means now if we have trained the system, okay, that this particular individual, this particular individual looks like a duck itself, right? So based on based on this understanding, based on this understanding, it can simply predict, okay, now this is this particular individual will not be a duck at all because again, this does not look anything similar to what we have that to what we are looking at, correct? And this is a part of of be of making a prediction itself right using this predictive model now if we simply so showcase them an image of something else right for example here we are simply training them okay which one is a duck and which one is not a duck here right and based on their understanding if now if we showcase the image of suppose of this of this particular creature that is a pig right then based on the, on the understanding itself they will be termed as not a duck why because we have trained them that means whenever we are training the entire system using multiple data sets and that is a part of supervised learning right that means we are training them and again based on our own defined set steps they are behaving accordingly as a part of 
supervised learning offered under AWS. Not we can say under machine learning itself, which will be looking at on top of AWS itself, right? Then we have something as unsupervised learning, right? Now this is something like suppose let's say we have been training the kid almost for a year, right? And now the kid has asked to again to or suppose if we have already taught the kid on a particular topic, right? Now based on its own understanding on the topic, now the kid can start working on learning new things here, right? Based on what we have trained them already, right? Based on what we have trained, how we have trained them already, they can simply categorize. Suppose now we have trained them. Okay, which one is a mouse? Which one is a duck? Which one is a rabbit? Right. So based on their own learning, they can simply segregate. They can now simply segregate different individuals on their own, right? Without us telling them that is a part of unsupervised learning here, right? When we don't label them with anything here, and they can simply segregate them without. We can simply segregate the objects without any kind of labels. That is a part of unsupervised learning that is a part of unsupervised learning here right and then we have reinforcement learning as well that we will be focusing on step by step as we move further we have the concept of reinforcement learnings as well right and basically in now in here we have multiple algorithms are also available like we have under supervised we have regression then we have classification and under unsupervised we have clustering and then we have association algorithm also put in place here right now what exactly these are we'll be learning on these step by step as we move further and basically in order to automate in order to make any system autonomous we have to first of all process the raw data now for example suppose if we want to train the systems then we may have data available or we can say stored in different locations for example data may be stored in uh, in cache registers data may be stored as order clips data may be stored in the e in the format of emails right so they can be it can be come uh, data may be from coming from different sensors as well as a part of suppose if we are focusing on making an ai system for aircraft then we have multiple sensors right so now we need to rely need to we need to rely on data being generated by those sensors and again that will be a complete sensor data that it will be a part of complete raw data altogether, right? And these will, and these will be a part of complete raw data as a part of data processing. Uh, we can say data the first step where we where and how exactly we have to fetch the data altogether, right? And in here we have to iterate data until it is completely ready to be processed. Then we can pre-process the data here. We can make we can make the entire data ready, right? And then we simply iterate it to find the best possible models, right? So, with, for example, now in here, once we have the data processed, that means we need to process the data here, to process the raw data. We have to cleanse it as well. In case of any kind of abnormalities, we have to remove the, that those abnormalities from the data as well, right? And then we have the best iteration possible. Uh, we can say model possible for the for the data itself. That means here we have to define the model that we want to apply. To the given data in order to auto in, in order to make it autonomous right so here we have to apply first of all the learning algorithm to data whether we are focusing on supervised unsupervised reinforcement right or our own artificial neural network learning here right so there are multiple learning algorithms that we have to add here right and basically here we have to iterate to find the best model because the same data can be treated differently because we can use the same data set to be to, uh, for different problem statements, right? And that's why for different problem statements, we do need to have different strategies being applied here. We do need to have different strategies being applied here. All right. And once we have applied the, and once we have applied the algorithms here, once we have applied the algorithms here, then we have, then we can simply choose the, then we can simply choose the deployed the, the, the deployed model. For example, here we have multiple models here, like we have. The, uh, now here we have regression classification clustering association that we'll be discussing step by step right and based on the model that we have chosen we can simply attach that model to the system and then it can simply learn from that particular data set itself as a part of machine learning algorithm structure here right and that's why here we have uh, and that's why in order to complete the complete in order to execute the process from pre-processing data Till deployment of that particular model, so we have to use something called as ML Studio. 
as a part of machine learning studio altogether right so that we can study the entire structure and then we can and then we can start developing on top of it then we can start developing on top of it as a part of machine learning algorithms that we can go ahead and create as a part of machine learning execution here now next is we have a service called as aws lex we have service called as aws lex here right the main purpose of lex is basically to design the concept of chatbots right now what exactly a chatbot is a chatbot as you know is a complete conversational we can say toolkit right which is basically written in natural language like we have the concept of nlp natural language processing now the main purpose of this one is again where it simply understand the intent of the user that means the context right because again if you talk about nlp natural language processing it simply revolves around the idea of different context because the same thing can be can be said in different manner the same thing can be said in different manner when we are talking about the context here right so different users they can they can simply say things in different context and that is exactly what we have to focus on here correct because then we have because again just like we have alexa we have uh, we have google assistant we have siri now for performing the same task we can uh, we can order these assistants in different manner right and again it doesn't matter in which context we say them we say we we give them the order they will perform the activities right because again they are able to judge on the context right they are able to evaluate in which context that particular thing has been said and how they have to process it and that is what a complete concept for natural language processing is right and basically it is simply used for for understanding the intent of the user and sending a response back on based on the business rules of the organization that's the main concept of chatbots running on nlp natural language processing here all right and for the, now the first chatbot the first chatbot called as eliza was built in 1966 to mimic the human conversation altogether that was when the well, the first chatbot eliza was built right and in terms of chatbot applications here we now they are extensively used in online shopping in booking tickets in news reports in ordering foods right so there are multiple use cases available for chatbot application that we can think of right and again basically in terms of types of chatbot we basically we have command bots and then we have learning bots so command bots works on the concept of predefined text that has been defined inside these inside these chatbots again and based on those predefined responders they can respond accordingly or here we have learning bots so based on the users how they are interacting they can learn their pattern they can learn their language and then only they can get started right depending upon the context in which they have been said here you can simply start understanding the users languages in which in which context they are saying things and then only they can get started all right and and amazon lex here is basically a service for building conversational interfaces into applications using voice and text based support right so basically now here it simply uses nlp natural language processing along with the asr call as automatic speech recognition so these are all diff two different components that we have we have these amazon lex based on nlp as a natural language processing and then we have asr call as automatic speech recognition as a part of asr itself right so basically this is used for building the conversation interfaces into any application using voice and text based results altogether that exactly we have lex for right we have amazon lex all together as a part of the entire discussion here now the main purpose of of lex as we have discussed is it is basically used for building the chatbots for handling the customer support or because a customer contacts a bank but the, now for example if we are implementing this on top of any banks right so we, so in here customers can contact the banks for a for the account balance right they can simply send the message or they can simply use the the, the chat based system that the bank has been or that bank has opted in for bank customers they have opted in for right and then they, now we can use lex we can use aws lex as a part of amazon web services right and then we can allow lex to understand the context of the user based on the request the, what they have generated right and after the request here now after the request here we have amazon poly right 
So again, here and here, we can, what they can do is they can simply respond to user in speech, right? Uh, Poly is again a service offered by Amazon where we can deliver the results as a part of speech as well. We can deliver the results as a part of speech as well, right? So again, they can simply revert back, okay, savings account or checking account balance. Again, they can simply revert using the Amazon Poly service as well, right? And for sending the, the notification, we can simply use Lambda service. Now, Lambda is a serverless computing services offered by AWS. So basically, we do have the post for launching the, the full fledged server. We have EC2, right? The concept for which we have discussed so far. And AWS Lambda is basically a serverless, a serverless computing platform offered by AWS, right? That we can use again to get started, right? So using so using lambda so using lambda here we can simply connect our application with DynamoDB. Now DynamoDB is also something that we will be discussing in detail as we move further. So it's basically DynamoDB is a no SQL database. DynamoDB is a no SQL database. Then we have Amazon SNS. SNS is simple notification service used for delivering the notifications that has been generated by any service. And then we have Amazon SES. SES is simple email service. That means if we want the emails to be to be sent, right? We want the emails to be sent here, then we can simply use SES for that, right? And at last we have all the other services that we can use. Suppose if we have data also stored as a part of RDS, we have data also stored as a part of RDS with, with any engine, right? Then we can connect it Lambda using your two these two. Or you can say these multiple engines as well as a part of as a part of AWS Lambda services integration. And once they have got the data, then again they can send the data back to Lex, right? And again, these now whatever is happening here, the logs for these will be stored and events are also kept a track of. Now this is also done using a service called as CloudTrail. Now CloudTrail is also a service offered by AWS through which it simply maintains the logs for different kind of activities happening in the entire system altogether right so that any kind of activity happening here this can be reported this can be uh, this can be reported back and we can say well here as a part of as a part of aws right and once the entire processing has been done here now the customer is provided with the accurate or we can say account balance either through voice or either through text-based system and as a part of our hands-on here we'll be focusing on how we can create one chatbot as well using aws lex and in here we can now here we can use it to build powerful interfaces to use it to use to be used with both mobile applications right like we have the customer like we have oyo health right so basically it is also used for building high interactive and conversational user experiences for for IoT itself because again it is highly useful for IoT platform as well. IoT as, as in Internet of Things where different devices are connected to a single network altogether as a part of IoT platforms. And this is being used by NASA, right? Again, these are basically used for building the enterprise chat, uh, the chatbots to check sales data, marketing performances and much more. Right, so again, there are multiple use cases that we can have that we can observe on top of these automated chatbots right and this will be really useful when we are deploying the applications for our own company as well right when we are building application for our own company and then we can simply deploy these as a part of our as a part of our entire integration as well now again even though when we are even though we, if we are not the actual de actual developer still we can have the entire team still we can have the entire team delivered for us right as a part of use case for less as a part of use case for Lex here. And basically the main benefits of using Amazon Lex is it offers an easy to use console and we have predefined bots. So here, even though when we don't have that much of technical expertise here, we can simply define the logic and then we can get the entire chatbot up and running by using the predefined services offered by AWS, by offered by AWS here. Right? And again, it simply employs advanced deep learning functionalities that we can offer here, correct? And again, it simply it provides us complete seamless deployment and scaling. And again, there are multiple integration with built in with AWS platform and offering a cost effective platforms here.
So basically, in order to understand the index here, first of all, chatbot receives the user input and then it can simply process, it can simply reply with the answers and perform the actions, or we can also ask for other inputs as well, right? If the uh, if the entire output has if the entire input has been received here, right? If the entire input has been received by chatbots, then you can simply process it first, right? And using the lambda, using the lambda services here, it can simply connect. Now chatbot will simply trigger AWS lambda service and lambda function, whatever we have defined here, it will simply be integrated by some other with some other services that like we have DynamoDB, SNS, SES, and for any of the services as per the requirement or as per the structure that have we defined for chatbots, right? And then here we can, and then in order to get it started, first of all, here we can create, create a chatbot, then we can test the board on a window side, then we can simply publish a version and create an alias, and then we can deploy it on top of a suitable platform here, right? And before we get started on seeing the hands-on on top of, of Amazon Lex here, we have, first of all, we have certain terminologies that we have to be acquainted with. First of all, we have Amazon Bot. So it's simply an artificial program that is useful for simulating an interactive conversation, right? Then we have intent. Now intent simply represents an action that users want to perform. For example, we want to, we want the user to send an image. We want the chatbot to send an image, right? Or we want the chatbot to send the users to a link or look at that. So these are what? These are the intent, right? That means the action that the user wants to perform, correct? And then we have the attributes as name, upper other cases, and then we have intent fulfill, right? We'll be discussing these parts step by step as we continue further. And then we have slots, so slots are simple parameters that an intent might require, right? Suppose this is, again, we have intent, right? We want the, we want the user to suppose open up a, spe a specific web page, right? Again, and there are multiple parameters. That means which page it has to report it at which page, which time slot here. What are different other parameters that needs to be specified here as a part of intent, right? Then we have slot type. So again, each and each and each and every slot has a type. And again, here we can use built-in, or we can also define our own custom slot types altogether, right? Once the intent has been completed, again, it will simply build a function to fulfill the intent and it will simply be deployed on top of client application as well so here yeah, there are two ways that through which we can fulfill our intent we can use our inbuilt lambda function or in case it has been some other functions defined by the companies itself or the client for which we are building it they can use those and then we can define the lambda function as a part of a code hook as a part of a code hook here right where the custom where the customize where the, the users can customize the entire we can customize the entire user interaction or we can have we can simply initiate and validate the user input suppose if they have entered a wrong input then that cannot trigger the entire ai system as well correct and that's why we have to make sure we are validating the entire input of the users as well and then at last we have to simply execute the entire input altogether right all right so now let's get right back to our console so that we can log into our console and then we can have the quick access on top of Lex services. Okay, here we have to enter the MFA code. Let's fetch our MFA code as well. Just a moment. So here we can enter the MFA code 879104. Okay, it hasn't changed. One six nine 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 six. So once we log in into our console here, we would be able to see here. We would be able to see the same portal for which we have signed up. Now, once we are not as as always, guys. So again, here we simply have to look for the service that we are focusing on, right? Like we have been looking for S3, for EC2, for IM services. The same way here. First of all, here we have to search for a service called as Lex, right? So here we can simply so use the search bar. 
we can simply go ahead and use the search bar here and here we can simply search for a service called as legs now here we'll be finding uh, now here we'll be finding legs here here we have leg business so here we have to open up legs let's open this up now currently by default we are into mumbai so now remember now remember guys legs is not available for every region here so currently we are in mumbai so now let's do one thing let's simply switch to north virginia as we had discussed not every service is available in every region here right so here we can switch to our service for north virginia now once we are into amazon lex here we can simply click on get started first of all we have to look for the service called as lex and then here we can simply click on get started here right now in here we can choose now in here we can choose we can create our own custom bot or we can choose any of these predefined samples here so just like we have said now we will be looking at samples for almost every service that we will be discussing here for example we have other services like we have beanstalk we have cloud formation right where we get multiple predefined samples suppose we are just simply a beginner right and we want to see how exactly the chatbots work and we want to see a simple or we can say simple base here right then we can simply choose these samples as well for example here we want to use, to try a hands on for booking trip right for order flowers for schedule appointment right for example here we're looking for book trip so we can choose book trip we want to look for order flowers right we can see a sample for order flowers we can look for schedule schedule appointment as well right so based on our now as we as you can see as soon as we are making changes here the responses and the questions are also being changed here as you can as we can observe so if we go to, to order flowers again if we go for booking trip here if we go for for booking trip we can see first of all here we have i would like to book a hotel sure which city new york city then what day do you want to check in and then we are simply checking for it right so basically first of all it starts it simply starts with the intent that means that the user means intent is to book a trip to book a hotel altogether right that's the main intent of the users correct then they have started with the other cases now then we have started with the other cases that means spoken or typed phrases right that invokes our event now currently our main intent is to book hotel right and for booking the hotel as a user we have received okay i would like to book a hotel right and then we have slots now that means again based on the based on the parameters here then we have asked which city and then they are giving us slots slots as in the required data pointers to fulfill the intent correct that is a part of city at all together right and then we have prompts and then we have prompts here so prompts will be ask question how the user how the user or okay, say any additional data that needs to be that needs to be defined and then when they have defined this then they have then we are simply fulfilling it as well right and then it will simply process it okay are you sure you want to book a seat or book the hotel in your city once the user confirms then the entire confirmation will be done here right same way for ordering flowers as well same way for schedule appointment right so in here we can simply create our own chatbots using these systems right and in here we can simply click on custom bot to get started we can simply click on custom bot and in here we can define the bot name in here we can define the bot name here exactly what exactly we are trying to create here we can define the entire bot name now under bot name we can simply let's suppose let's say we here we are trying to create any bot right in here we are trying to create any bot here mm, okay so for what purpose shall we create this bot here so we can go for movie booking as well because movie booking sounds good so let's book a movie because again we don't want to make anyone hungry by ordering food right let's go for movie booking here now in here we can define the bot name suppose say we want to call this as book movie here we can call this bot as book movie altogether so let's say we make it as book movie and then we can define the language then here we have we had to choose the output voice itself right now these are the output voice as in now in case you have been using in case you have been using the we can say uh, the different voice based system like we have alexa we have siri right so in here we can define in here we can define the voice as well right 
Hello, my name is Sally. As you can see, I suppose if we go for Sally here, right? So basically, it will simply showcase you a sample of the voice in which we, we want the chatbots to respond here. For example, let's say we want to hear some other voice here. For example, suppose for Matthew. Hello, my name is Matthew. Right? So depending upon our context here, we have different use cases. Hello, my name is Kendra. Sounds interesting. So that's it. So just like we have our own voices here, we can simply go for the current voices here. Now, for example, let's say let's hear for Ivy as well. Hello, my name is Ivy. Okay, this sounds like a school girl. So now here, let's say we stick with Salad. Hello, my name is Sally. And here we can simply define the text that we want to do we uh, to here, right? For example, suppose we how or suppose uh, which movie do you want to book? Or suppose which movie as simple as which movie, right? Let's suppose we simply type which movie itself. So this will simply talk this loud aloud. Which movie? Which movie? As you can see, now we have the entire sentence being repeated in our own voice or in that in that particular voice altogether. Uh, yes, Ajay, we can have our own now. We don't we can't have our own voice, but again we can choose a voice that we want to use as an output voice here. We can choose the output voice here, right? Now, once we define that part here, then we have session timeout, right? So here we can define this as a session timeout. For example, that means after a given time period, it should be how much time it should be opted out for. Because again, now as you can see, now Siri has an Indian version, right? Siri do have an Indian version. So currently it is being developed as a part of the entire development for every possible assistant because they have already known that this is going to be a big market and that's why they are customizing this. All right. Now, once we define this part here, now next is we can simply find the IM role. We can keep it to by default. We can choose the default IM role for this entire service. Now here, depending upon a rule here, we can simply make it yes, or we can simply define the no as well, right? Suppose here we don't want to, now here, we are, we are not following the entire COP API rule, mostly, mostly applicable for Europe. Or if we are, again, we can simply keep it to yes, and then we can simply have to define the rule altogether, right? So in here, we define the timeout as opposed to minutes. We define, we define the session timeout to be two minutes as a part of standing timeout. And then we have create. Once we define it here, we can click on create. And this may take a second. Okay, let's refresh. Now, once we have, now once we define the intent here, now once we have the bot created, then we have to define then we have to start by defining the user in, uh, we can say user intent altogether right so here we have to click on this option which says create intent now once you click on create intent here here we have to simply define okay if you already have the intent created from the past then we can simply work on importing the intent or we can simply click on create intent here we can click on create intent and then we can define the intent for example let's say here our main intent is to book movie ticket here our main intent is to book movie ticket we can define book movie ticket right that is our main intent book movie ticket and once we add this here now here we have to define the utterances that means now for example suppose the first attempt here that means the first component that will be that the user will be typing here as a part of utterance here, right? The first thing that that user will be typing in. So here we can simply define, suppose say here, we get ask the user, suppose as 
I would like to, I would like to book a movie ticket. We can define, I would like to book a movie ticket, right? Now in here, we have to define multiple slots as well. In here, we can define multiple slots as well, right? Now slots are basically, we can say the variables. Now these are the variables for the legs itself, right? Suppose let's say when we are, now in case, suppose let's say we are, when we are ordering pizza, right? The slot will be like, for example, size, or again, or for example, in here we have to define, that means the options, right? So slots are simply like option itself. Slots are simply like options, right? So here what we can do is we can simply add the slot itself, right? So here we can define the name as well. For example, here we can define the name. Suppose what can be the what can be the slots or we can say for movies itself, what can be the option for movies? So for example, suppose if we are talking about hotel, by hotel booking, right? Then slots can be location. That means in which location we are we are trying to book a, book a hotel, right? Same way for movies, what kind of slots can be there? So first of all, it can be location, right? Then we have to choose a slot type as well, right? That means this is what now, this is just like we have data type, just like we have data type itself, right? For example, here we have multiple things defined here, right? For example, here we have region, book, we have book series, we have civil, colors, country, codes, right? So there are multiple slot type that we can define here. There are multiple slot type that we can define here, right? So for example, here, as we define location, let's suppose we are asking the users as location itself, right? Then we can choose some different slot type here, right? For example, here we are defined simply, go, now here we want to go for location itself, right? Or suppose I say here, we are simply want the user to type in their city name. Now, since this is basically focused only on for US itself, so here we can search for city. Suppose I say here, we are going for US city itself. Right, and then we have to define the message. Suppose here we choose the U city here, then we have to define the message as well. That means in which city, or suppose what city, or which city we are looking for. Right. So here we can define what city as a location. Right, and then suppose if we want to keep on adding more prompts here, as a part of more slots here. We can simply click on add and then we can add ask for more options here. For example, next is we can also ask for timing as well, right? Timing or we can say we can ask for show time for show time, right? And then we can find the again. We can choose between the slot itself. We can choose from the slot itself, right? Suppose here that we want the user to enter time itself, right? So what we have done, we have, we have chosen show time and now we are asking the users to the slot, the slot type is basically focused on time altogether, right? We can choose time and then here we can ask the user as show time as a part of preference here. As a part of preference here, right? So here we can simply define as show time and then we can simply define these step by step. Now, in here, once we have defined the slots here, then we have the confirmation prompt as well right so here and here we can simply configure the confirmation prompt as well. suppose once the user have entered anything they'll be prompted with the confirmation as well next is again we can define now in terms of fulfillment here we can simply return the parameters to the client itself now next is in terms of any kind of responses here right again if we want to if we want to add a specific a customized message here as a part of response we can simply define these right now let's keep this by default. We don't want to change this, right? So here we can keep this by default here. Uh, no, see drama, we haven't defined anything under confirmation prompt, right? But again, we, if we want, we can define a confirmation prompt as well. For example, suppose if we want to define a confirmation prompt, right? So okay, suppose, are you sure you want to order a drink? For example, let's say if the user has selected, suppose, are you sure? you want to book a table right here we can define the name itself right suppose here we have are you sure you want to book now in here we have to define the parameters now in here we have to define the parameters itself for example if we type in as are you sure you want to you want to book 
Now, currently we have to define now this should be replaced with a booby name, right? Suppose let's say here we have the here where they have here they are asking for showtime for location now. Okay, we haven't asked for movie, right? Or suppose any kind of movie name itself. So again, if you want, we can add another slot as well. If you want to ask the users for movies as well, right? For which movie they are they are trying to book here. Suppose if this is what movie itself. So here we can name this as movie. And in here, now whether we want this to be treated like a name itself, or suppose we already have a option available for movie in this in this slot type. Like we have movie, we can search for movie. Right here, we can choose a movie here as a, as a part of slot. Just a moment, right? And again, here we can choose okay, which movie, or suppose which movie, or what city, showtime. Okay, we can here we can go for what movie itself, right? Or we can say for which movie. Here we can define the prompt as well, right? Now, here we can choose okay, how exactly we want it to be added here. For example, we want to keep on adding multiple prompts here, we can simply go on and on one by one we can define that and then and in here we can define the order as well right we define the movie then we have chosen the movie name here we can go for which movie like we had defined as a question right and in here we can define the orders as well so suppose we want first of all to we want the, the bot to ask for location and then we want the bot to ask for movie and then we want the bot to ask for showtime because that should be the order correct because we want to ask for the location, the movie, and and the showtime. Suppose we do, we do we no longer want the showtime to be mandatory here, right? We can simply market these two for being the most important components here, location and movie altogether, right? We can define those, and then we have the confirmation prompt. Here we can choose. Okay, are you want to? Are you sure you want to book? Now suppose we had defined the name as movie, right? Then in here in parameters, now remember this is, has to be made as a part of double code as a part of uh, parenthesis itself right so here we have here we have to define movie right and suppose if the user does not define as confirm suppose if the user does not define as confirm and then again if the user simply says no then again here we can simply uh, make sure okay okay your your movie is your movie tickets are or not your your movie tickets are not booked are not booked we can simply showcase them a um, complete message like this one right okay your movie tickets are not booked right so in here we can now uh, here we can have a complete control of how exactly we want to create the bots here right this is how we can customize the entire bot as well here we can customize the entire bots exactly as per our requirement right now next is we can define the response as well now by default we can simply return the parameters to a client itself or, or we can simply send it to a lambda function right now currently as we have not discussed on lambda function yet here we can simply keep it to return to parameters to client for now then we'll be coming back to the lambda function in a while all right now in terms of response we can keep it to blank as of now because again here we can keep this option blank altogether we don't want this one right now in here we can simply click on save intent once we are done we can simply click on save intent now once we are done here now what we can do is now to see this in live action here we can simply click on build okay i think we missed on on the hook url i think this will generate a simple error as we have missed the hook url Now, depending upon the upon the parameters here, guys. Okay, here we can simply it will it may take some time for this one to be executed here. All right. So now, once we have the bot created here, now once the now, once the bot has been successfully created here, now here in the in the right section of the screen here, we can see a sample test bot, right? Absolutely. Now here we can simply go ahead and test it as well, right? So for example, here we simply test. Okay. I want to suppose that here we can simply define as I would like to book movie ticket 
as you can see now even though we suppose to say we simply type book movie ticket now we have defined i would like to book movie ticket As you can see, can you all see this? We have the watch city here, right? So now in here, we can simply define, suppose we want to define this as suppose in, we want to book this up in New York. We want to book a ticket in New York altogether, right? Then it will automatically ask which movie. Suppose if we name the movie as any name here, for example, like Shawshank Redemption. Again, then it is asking us for showtime, for example, let's say for 8 p.m., right? And again, since we had defined for the confirmation as well, this will ask, okay, are you sure you want to book for Shawshank? As I can, as I can see, can you, can you all see this? All three slots have been filled here, correct? So we had defined location, we had defined showtime, and then we had defined movie name itself, right? So all these slot details has been completely booked. And as you can see, all of, all of these three details has been booked here, right? So suppose if we simply revert this with yes, so as you can see now, intent movie ticket is ready for fulfillment. That means now we can simply define the fulfillment, right? So currently we have defined, okay, we want this to be returned to the user itself, right? And suppose we want to run a Lambda function. That means we want the actual booking to be done, right? Then we do have to integrate this as a part of Lambda function as well. So I hope you all are enjoying this. You all did enjoy this entire discussion on machine learning using like how we can create this using the chatbot guys. And now as a continuation here, suppose let's say we want to create a Lambda function. We want to do create a simple Lambda function here, right? So Lambda, as you know, is simply a serverless computing platform. Lambda is what? A serverless computing platform, right? And now if we want to indicate Lambda here, what we can do is, First of all, we do have to go ahead and create a Lambda service, right? We do have to go ahead and create a Lambda service. Now for doing that, we can simply search for a service called as Lambda. Now we haven't discussed this part yet and we will be discussing this part going forward, step by step. For example, in here, if you want to process it by Lambda function, we can process it. In case we want to store the data into Amazon Aurora database or suppose DynamoDB, right? Depending upon where we want the data of the, the suppose if we have already have a list of show times with us, right? How we can refer to those show timings, how we can store data. So that means suppose whatever is being entered by the user, how we can store it as well, right? We can all do this exactly as per our requirement, right? We can do this all exactly as per a requirement here. So now in here, what we can do is first of all, in order to add a lambda function, we have to create a lambda function as well we have to create one lambda function as well right and for doing that what we have to do is we simply can search for service call as lambda in services we can simply open up lambda service here we can open up lambda now when we open up lambda here we simply have to create one service we have to create one function here right now in here what we can do is now in here if you don't want now if for the first time be for being the for the first time user here now lambda as you know is a serverless computing platform right so basically the main purpose of lambda now we will discuss lambda going forward as well but again to have a quick understanding of what exactly lambda is first of all let's go back to a picasso board to have a quick understanding here right now to understand Lambda in a much better way here. So basically when we are launching any application like we discussed on the concept of EC2 as well, right? When we are launching any particular application altogether, we have to deploy, we have to create one server. We have to create one server on top of, on top of EC2, right? As a Elastic Cloud Compute server itself, right? Now if we now we can use this server for, a, we can use this EC2 server, right? As we have been discussing so far, if we want to deploy any application on our or for our website, suppose we are deploying a website, right? Then we can deploy the website on top of EC2, right? And again, now suppose if we want, now suppose we want to test the application altogether. For example, if we only want to test the application, we don't want to deploy a full scale application. We don't, we don't want to deploy a full scale server. Then what we can do, we can simply use a service called as Lambda, right? 
so that suppose if we want to simply execute and test our code here right that means we are looking only looking for testing the code then we can use this lambda function to simply uh, now using this lambda service we can upload a code to lambda and suppose the code took 3.2 second seconds suppose 3.6 seconds in order to in order to, to be executed complete right that means here we have to pay only for these 3.6 seconds nothing less nothing more because as we have discussed in ec2 we there's a pricing for on an hourly basis that means we have to pay for every hour correct but here in lambda service the pricing is for every 100 milliseconds the pricing here is for every 100 milliseconds here right that means here we have to pay only for the exact duration of time for which the code has been executed right and that's why suppose if we has any kind of event trigger system for example we have any kind of notification systems where we need to use the processing power only when there is a change or only when there is a trigger in the event correct then we can use the services for lambda so i guess it's almost time now guys so that's what we have discussed on the entire concept of machine learning and how we can get started on top of using amazon lex as well right so again thank you so much for joining guys and have a great day ahead take care bye bye